Hola amigos, fellow tennis nerds. I'm here with uh, Adrian, Carl Adrian. We're going to talk about a new topic today. You might have seen our previous video. I hope you did on footwork, uh, how to be lower, how to stay lower and how to be more explosive uh, in the footwork. And these are feedback I get through YouTube, through Instagram, uh, Twitter and my other channels. And today we're going to tackle a topic that came up quite a lot, which is shot selection. So actually choosing what stroke to hit. And this is something you see in your practice as a coach all the time, right? Absolutely. Shot selection is something that is um, not very much covered in both on YouTube, Instagram and different uh, social media. Um, and it's something that a lot of people wonder about. Yeah. Um, a lot of technique out there, a lot of forehand, a lot of backhand, a lot of serves. Uh, need the fundamentals there for sure. Yeah, yeah. Need the fundamentals and then uh, I don't think you should overthink the technique too much. Uh, as we were saying earlier that in the top 100 there's 100 different techniques. Yeah. There's, there's not one correct Some look ugly, some technique. look amazing, but the, the efficiency of the stroke and where you hit the ball, that's the key. Like how do you hit it? How deep is it? How heavy is it? There's so many different aspects to when you Absolutely. actually play points. You're right. And what you see and what you know I've struggled with and players that are coming back to tennis or are not playing as much is that they either go for too much, we talk about going towards the lines, uh, or they, they just get very stressed in a match situation. Their thinking goes all out the window and they're trying to go for too much or they're not v evaluating the ball, they're not really evaluating the risk and reward, which we're going to talk about in this yes, one. Yes, exactly. Like the main difference between a competition player and a recreational slash club player if you want to call it it's that a competition player will never aim for the lines right i see all the time club players mm -hmm. they in as soon as they kind of see a, an average shot they kind of go right for the line and something that i always say is that your opponent is not a robot your opponent is not the god of tennis Unless uh, until you get to, to the to the big tour, no? Until yeah, you, yeah, until exactly. Until you meet, so meet Roger and Novak and these guys, but before, any any time before that, your opponent is not going to go for the lines either, or they might, but in the long run they're going to be missing more than they're going to be getting in. So if you can, uh, rather than aim for the for the cross court like on, uh, to the singles lines, yeah. if you can aim for the zone and, and aim for the margins. The shot might go to the line because you're aiming for the zone, but the shot is still in. Rather than aiming at the line, remember a shot that's this much out, it's out. So you're putting in, in a lot of risk in your game and it almost becomes kind of a, like a luck of the draw. If you're heading towards the line, okay, will it be this much in or this much out? And you're putting you know, too much luck into the game where you can actually play with bigger mar margins, bigger targets. And, and build the point that well, you might have to hit one extra shot, but that's not that bad. If you're in the position to hit that shot, it's going to be good. So uh, I think it's, it's important to evaluate uh, the right shot and to have a good thinking around the risk and reward. Is this uh, a position where I can actually hit a winner or do I need to hit a rally ball or do I hit, need to hit a defensive shot or should I get an aggressive shot? And you were talking about different kind of zones on the tennis court before, right? Yes, correct. We divide the court into three different zones so if we can say like let's say two meters behind the baseline and further back towards the fence if we can call that a red zone for example is how i like to call it like a traffic light and then from that two meters behind the baseline to maybe two meters within the baseline can be a yellow zone and then anything from the from like say the three quarters and then closer towards the net that could be a green zone so anything that's further back let's say in the, in the red zone you should never try to go for the line or never go for a flat shot if you try to go for the lines you're very far away from from your target right just think about darts yeah. i mean when you're going to throw a dart and you're one meter from the dartboard you're gonna you're gonna hit it pretty pretty easily however when you're standing five meters back it's tougher and then if you're standing 10 meters back it's even tougher so translating this back into tennis the further back you are, the harder it is to hit your target. So aim for a larger target zone, a little bit more towards the middle. Keep that ball in play, rather go higher over the net, make the ball bounce higher. But keep the ball in play. Remember, your opponent is not a robot. Your opponent is also human. They're also going to hit the ball back to you and then you can construct the point onwards from that. Yeah, exactly. You might just have to hit a defensive shot, get back into the rally and then you're in a better position for the next shot to be a bit more aggressive. But you don't have to go all in. Like maybe a bit more aggressive and then when you get a green ball, that's when you can actually maybe go for a winner or, or just exactly. try to finish the point, you know. But exactly. before that, 
don't do it because I think overall the risk reward ratio is not in your favor. So you're going to end up making a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. which is what we see on, on the rec level and among club players. It's, it's, there's too many mistakes. The level of, of stroke and technique and so on, footwork can be there, but then that you know tension of playing a match or playing points might result in that very bad shot selection, which I'm, I'm guilty of as well. So I think this is an interesting topic to cover. Um, and if you have those three zones in mind while playing your, your next match, you're, you're going to feel like it's going to be much easier to, to win points. You're going to be more calm. You're going to kind of know what to do in what situation. You're not going to, I call it a hit and hope. Uh, we don't want any of that. You kind of want, okay, now I'm this far behind the baseline. I'm going to hit this kind of shot. Now I'm in the, in the orange ball, uh, in the orange zone. I'm going to hit this kind of shot. Now I'm stepping in. I can hit a bit flatter. Uh, kind of be aware of where you are and what to do. And this is going to help you yeah, it's, enormously. It's, it's quite a, a basic concept, but as a, you need very basic concepts when you are playing tennis because you're, it's already a very difficult sport. You're already stressed because there's a match, match situation going on. So you need to actually play a lot of matches. That's a very clean tip as well, because if you just play and hit, you're not going to improve because the tension of match play and points play is quite, very different from just hitting and, mm. and, and playing casually. So if you're playing matches, you're going to think about this as a tool to uh, guide your shot selection. I think you will improve significantly if you just do this over and over again. And we're going to demonstrate now, me and Carl, a few ideas of how you can approach this. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm going to uh, explain uh, what we were just commenting with the uh, zones on the court, right? So if I can briefly just draw a very simple line going a little bit out like this, right? And then try to mirror that on the other side. Doesn't need to be too precise. Out like this. Okay, and then we can maybe draw another one about two meters behind the baseline, more or less. So this is your this is your home right this this, this we call our our home where, where we want to get back to our base okay so all this would be a neutral zone this is the orange zone or yellow zone when we're within this area we're in a rally situation we're in a, a position on the court where you can hit the ball to either side cross court is always a little bit safer um, reason being there's three reasons so the net is shaped like this, right? The middle is the lowest part of the net. It's three feet, 91.4 centimeters. And as it's slightly lower, you have a little bit more margin when you're on the forehand and you can hit cross courts. Okay, if you were going to go down the line, the net is a little bit higher. So we, cross court is always the, the safest shot. Another reason why is that when you're going cross court and you do catch the ball a little bit late, the ball instead of going cross court is going to be a little bit more centered or maybe down the line if you hit it very late but the ball is still in play however the other one if you go down the line and you hit it slightly late it's already out third reason is that when you're going to go cross court from this corner to the opposite corner is a further distance than going here and going straight right diagonal is longer than straight so that means that we have the court is about maybe a meter and a half two meters longer so we have even a little bit more margin of length to to work around now that being said when you're in your orange zone you're in a rally situation so you can hit the ball you can come back here and then you kind of know that when the ball's going to come back you, you're going to be in, in the same position and you're going to be in a position where the ball can come back and forward three five seven it can go 15 times that's fine when the ball goes back and you see yourself moving back, okay, now we're starting to get back into the red zone. When you're in the red zone, you want to stay away from the lines. You don't want to think about the lines. If I draw a zone um, that I would like to draw on the other side, but to explain to you guys, is like this area, you know. Here you can see this is a very good zone to aim for. As you can see, it's off the middle, so you're making your opponent move, but you're not anywhere near the line. And if you aim here, and then you do happen to go a bit off, you still have margin within the lines. I would like you guys to look at now, Wimbledon is being played, many more tournaments ahead going to be played. Have a look at the players, where they're hitting and in what situations. If you really pay attention to this, you're gonna see that the players very rarely hit the lines. 
And if they do hit the lines, it's not because it was intentional. It's because they're going for the zone and it can go a bit wider. Now, when we go back, you're going to aim a little bit closer to the middle and into, the, into our zones that I've just drawn there. When you're in your comfort zone, in your orange, in your neutral zone, then yes, you can hit a little bit stronger, a little bit lower, and you can go maybe, if I can draw another line, again, maybe like this, okay? Right, and then when we now have a ball that's bouncing within the service line, and we can step in, usually these balls bounce a bit higher. This is definitely a green ball. We can step in, the ball is above the net. We don't need to give the ball so much shape anymore because we're already above the net contacting the shot. We can hit the ball straighter. Our court now looks bigger, right? I can, I can actually see now the baseline over the net. When I'm standing back here, the baseline is under the net. So that just goes to show how much more of the court you can actually see. The court is bigger, you can hit straighter, and then with this shot, you can go forward. Very often, club players from this situation think, okay, now, now I'm in the green zone, I'm gonna absolutely smack it. And that's not always the case. So remember that when you're in here, you're three, four meters inside the line. So this means that you don't even need to hit so hard. The opponent is gonna receive the ball faster because you're you're already like uh, eating time off your opponent right the ball is not bouncing going back there the ball is traveling about four plus four meters less so you're already taking time off your opponent you don't need to hit so hard you can hit maybe the same power the ball is going to go to that side even faster and you can follow that ball remember to always follow the ball to the net just to give a recap i'm in my base i'm going to start going back so when i go back I'm going to go a little bit closer to the middle and I'm going to hit it higher over the net. A little bit like a rainbow shape. I want to go higher and what your intention is, you want to make the ball bounce the same that your opponent has sent you back here. You want to send that ball back to him. Because if you leave it short, they're going to have the green ball and then you're going to see yourself running. Okay, never hit a forehand flat down the line or even or even cross court if you do hit the ball flat and hard that just means that the ball is going to come back fast and hard back to you and then you're going to see yourself again in a defensive position neutral zone you can go a little bit wider okay and you can hit also with some shape over the net doesn't need to be too uh, too much of a rainbow shape but definitely not flat either we want that margin over the net and then when we're in in our base and then we can step in and we see the ball above the net then yes we can hit the ball straighter we're already above the net and we can aim even wider we can even try to open the court okay opening the court will mean that the ball will bounce and the ball will cross the singles line before the baseline a shot like this i call it a cross court and a shot that bounces and will cross this line is opening the court and the more short it is, the more you open the court. This does not mean that you gotta make it bounce here. It can bounce here and it can still go that direction out. You're gonna see your opponent receiving a red shot and this is what we want, okay? We're gonna demonstrate this with, with Jonas, how I'm gonna be telling you guys what kind of shot I'm hitting and I'm gonna say it just before I hit as a, so I have a clear idea what shot I'm hitting and what shot I'm trying to execute. While Jonas goes to the other side there, I'm going to be telling you what drill we're going to do. Just before I'm going to hit my shot, I'm going to tell if it's a red shot, if it's a yellow shot or a green shot. Okay, and I'm going to hit the correct shot respectively. Okay, I've told Jonas to kind of uh, vary it for me. It might go a little bit wider, it might go deeper, it might go shorter. I'm going to be very aware of what kind of ball I'm receiving and then I'm going to execute from that point. Yellow. Green. Nice. Yellow. Red. Green. Ah. <laughs> Yellow. Yellow. Ah. Red. Yellow. Red. Ah. 
Good. Perdón. Red. Green. Ah. So as you can see there already, there's been actually a few situations where Jonas has sent me a deep shot where I'm having to hit a red ball and I'm hitting it with height, I'm hitting it with depth and I'm hitting it with some spin and he's actually missed that shot so that means that I've received a ball that's made me hit a defensive shot and I've actually won that shot from a defensive position because I didn't go for too much remember your opponent is not a robot your opponent is a human your opponent can do mistakes your opponent can hit that shot and leave it short hit it a green then you're into an attacking position we got to stay smart got to hit the right shot at the right moment and look for the right situations to try to go forward and attack sometimes not even necessary sometimes the point will end prior red 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 Oh, red. Ah, sorry. Oh. Green. Nice. Yellow. Yellow. Red. They actually went crossboard, but it worked. Red. Green. Nice. Red. As you can see there, and Jonas actually hit a brilliant slice. It stayed really low, it stuck to the ground. That's a red shot, I cannot attack from that. Although it's a little bit hypocritical perhaps because he didn't send me back. But I wasn't in a defensive position. I cannot create, I cannot attack from that shot. So that's a red, I need to be safe. I lifted it over the net and I keep the ball in play. Red. Red. Ah, oh, bravo. It's going yellow. Red. Red. Huh? Okay, I was quite lucky there, but thankfully I went for the zone. Red. Yellow. So I'm trying really to evaluate how deep the ball goes and just try to keep him on the leg. Green. And not go for too much. That's too nice. Yellow. Oh. Yep. Green. Ooh. That was a green shot. I tried to open my shot. Unfortunately, it was out. But I feel like I went for the right one. Maybe it was a bit too open as I was in the middle of the court. I can go wider, open the court more if I'm standing also more open to have a better angle. I think my shot selection was good, but I think I overdid it. I should have gone a bit less open because I was in the middle of the court. Let's try again. Yellow. Red. Oh. Red. Oh. Red. Oh. Green. Nice. Yellow. 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 Red. Green. Ooh. Yellow. Red. 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 Green. Red. 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 Ah. Ah. Nice. Good point there, Jonas. Red. Red. Yellow. Oh. Red. Oh. Oh. Yellow. 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 Red. Oh. Red. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I personally tried it. I didn't want to over uh, voice him. Thinking about it makes you play a little bit more passively at first but it really puts more effort into your thinking about how to evaluate the shot so i my tendency is to go for too much too soon i i like that style of tennis that's what i kind of brought me back into tennis watching a lot of federer i think a lot of players watched roger when he was at his best and they're like oh this is like ballet I, we want we should all play like this 
but almost nothing he does technically is easy to imitate. But a lot of players saw Fed and then they want to play like Fed. And play, Fed plays these shots that are like highlight reel, but they don't win matches on lower level because we're not Fed. It's better to imitate Rafa and Novak in that case because they are playing with more margins. Rafa with his top spin, Novak with his more defensive style, everything comes back. Uh, so learning how to evaluate, watching the greats play, they, like you said, they don't go for the lines. They go for depth. They, they are very confident in their depth of shot so yeah. that the opponent doesn't get the upper hand, but they don't do anything crazy. Like unless they're really pushed, they don't go for the line. Like that's a necessity shot, you know? You're right. And, and I think a lot of matches are lost on the club level because we make too many mistakes. I think that's the overall thing you're seeing. Players make too many mistakes. So the guy who just puts the ball back, whether it's pushy or not, with some topspin or not, he wins the match. I mean, if we think about risk uh, reward yeah. ratio, uh, you, you kind of got to think that throughout the, throughout the rally. You cannot go for a shot that's way too risky. Also, depending a little bit on, on your level and your confidence. But because you've seen a pro do it on TV, it doesn't mean that, that you can do the same shot. And it might go 1 out of 10. But in the long run, you're going to end up losing that point. And, and tennis is a sport where the games are very short. It, it's a matter of four points yeah. in a game. Very intense. It is very intense. And every point kind of counts. And if you hit a shot that you believed in, in in that moment and you miss it and you love 15 down, then you can kind of go in this downward spiral. Then you're going to maybe try it again and then it's, you're going to miss it again. You should definitely have your, your go-to uh, style. And then as, and then as the match goes along, you can kind of uh, adapt yourself if you're feeling better today or you're feeling worse today. Overall, at a, at a recreational club level, at, at an amateur level, whoever puts the ball in the most is probably going to win the match. We're not going to be meeting any players that are really going to win the point off you time and time again. With some amazing winners, with you don't some, see that yeah. really, like it's going to lead to more errors. Oh, you start the game, you win a game to, to love with three amazing points. Then the next three games, you're, you're like, you start missing and then you're suddenly you're down 3-1 or, or whatever, a uh, breakdown. But you play that amazing first game, it doesn't count more than one though, it doesn't matter. Right, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that you got to be a pusher now. Uh, you, can, you can be consistent, you can run and, and you can hit the ball, but always keeping the ball in the zone. And as you get better and more confident, your zones can start to become maybe smaller and smaller, and then they can get pushed centimeter by centimeter more towards the line, but never to the line. Not even a pro does that. You don't need to be a pusher. Hit the ball to the zones, keep the ball in play, and, and have these three zones in your mind, right? When you're back there, you're going to hit this kind of shot. When you're uh, on your on your neutral position, in, in your yellow position, you're going to hit this kind of shot. When you're in your green zone, you can hit a little bit more through it, you can go for it. Again, we don't want to miss our green shots. Our green shots, it's, it's a green light to win the points. If we miss that shot, you, you've now missed the shot that you're meant to win the point yep. of. And, and that can affect you negatively psychologically also. You, then you're going to think for the next two points in the game that oh, I should have won that point and now I didn't. And, and then you're going to get caught up on that easy shot that, that you may have missed. So better to don't smack it, don't overdo it, hit it again to the zone, maybe with a little bit more pace, a little bit straighter. Remember that you're already inside the court, so you're taking time off the opponent. Your opponent is also not a robot. The opponent is not going to guess which side you're going to correctly every time. Think a bit like a penalty in, in football, in yeah, soccer. Yeah. The opponent, when you're in a green zone, your opponent is going to guess a side. And if they guess the right side, okay, but you're going to be inside the court and then you're there for the volley or, or maybe they hit it short again and then you can go to the other side or maybe repeat the same side. But there is, it's a little bit 50-50 for your opponent. All the initiative is, is about you now. So we, we shouldn't miss the green shots either, although we should go for a little bit more. Yeah, and you, you can practice. Like I think an important shot for many club level players to practice, I mean, the pros do it all the time with hand feeds or not, but is to get these green zone balls and to get confident in playing with enough spin and pace that you can hit them consistently mm -hmm. uh, as a good shot. And then like if, if you get past is with some amazing shots, that's life, right? Yep. You just have to accept that. Uh, but you still know how to hit the shot over and over again. It's going to build your confidence. So I yeah. think that's green, green light ball, very important to practice for club players Absolutely. because you see a lot of miss, misses and it's very frustrating when you clip the net or you, you don't get enough on a ball mm. like that when you, when you should be able to. Watch tennis on TV or if you're lucky enough to watch it live um, and, and pay attention um, not only overall in the match, 
but uh, maybe after watching this video, pay a little bit of attention where the shots of the pros are bouncing. And, and you're gonna be a little bit surprised, I'm very sure, on how much inside the, the singles lines they're going. They're actually going, like Jonas said, they're actually going pretty deep. Very rarely you're gonna see them hit inside the, inside the service line. Always gonna go deeper than the service line. At least I know that's what they're, they're attempting to do always. But you're gonna be surprised how much inside the singles lines they're going. They're really going for either the forehand zone or the backhand zone. And then they're going for that, they're going again and again until the ball is short enough for really going for it. And then you will see some crazy highlight shots that they're going to go for, some hot shots. But then again, they've spent eight hours a day, every single day of their life training this. So, so they can go ahead and do this. But on a recreational level, stick to what's safe and then work from there. Yeah, and right? I think the system with the red, green and yellow light is, is really a good tool and easy to visualize. So you can actually talk mm. to yourself next time you're just rallying to warm that up and then you can move it into points. It might sound crazy at first, but I think it's, you're really going to see that this is a helpful tool at eval mm -hmm. to evaluate the shots properly. I'm, I'm definitely going to do it a lot more. I, I've done it in the past a little bit, but it, it's something that really helps uh, you not to overcook your shots, especially if you're an attacking player. I think for more defensive players, it's going to be more natural, uh, but for players who like to attack the ball, maybe hit a bit flat, uh, it's very useful because it's also what you said in the beginning, which is very true. If you get like you're pushed back, don't go for a flat shot, like put spin and put the ball with good depth back as you can, even if it's a, a high low, but whatever, mm -hmm. but just put it back with the same kind of uh, depth as you were pushed to. Yeah. I think that's very good. So if, if you don't have the natural spin, you have to work maybe a bit on the spin. Mm -hmm. But when that comes, you will, you know, win more points, I'm sure. Think about it like this. Your opponent wants to try to send you back just as much as you want to send your opponent back, right? So when your opponent sends you back, you got to send them more back than they just sent you. Because if you leave it short, you're falling into their trap. You're falling into their plan. Just like when you're hitting their shot yeah. deep and they hit it short as a, and then you receive a green shot, they fall into your plan. So, so kind of a little bit like reverse psychology, think about it like that. When they hit it deep, you got to hit it deeper back. When you slap it, all that's going to happen is that if, if you don't slap it good enough, the, the ball's going to come back just even faster, probably in, in the space where you are not, and you're going to see yourself running again. Hit it higher. When you hit it higher, you have obviously more time to return to your base, which is in, behind the, uh, the hash mark, and, and then work from there, work the points. Very often, you're not even going to need to win the point. Very often, your opponent is going to miss before you because now you know this information and your opponent has probably not watched this video, or I hope they do, but having this information, you might be one step ahead uh, than your opponents and keep yeah. that one ball more in play and, and they might not, so, so then they might miss and then you're going to feel, wow, I'm now getting points for free. And yeah. There's nothing better than getting points for free. We call them unforced errors in, in tennis. Mm. So I think the more aware and conscious you are of what's going on on the court, the better you will be at making decisions. That doesn't mean overthink, but that's being conscious of what, what is the trend in the match, what am I doing? What kind of colored ball am I missing? Am I missing yellow balls? Like why? Am I putting them too close to the lines? Too much down the line? Cross court, like you said in the beginning, there's a reason you see so many shots cross court because that is the ge geometry of the tennis court. Like you have mm. to use the geometry. We're playing like, it's like chess, you know, you're playing on this, this rectangle and you have to figure out like, ah, this is where I have more margins and how I, it's easier. This is the, where the net is a bit shorter. Mm. All these things actually make a, a big difference when you play. Yeah. Absolutely. So let us know what next topic you would like to see. And if you have any questions about this, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.